So we're going to be going into two mindset shifts. These are important principles. Let's get into them. The first one is your survival brain, your monkey mind. You heard of this before? Now, right here, there's a diagram of the different levels of your brain. And when you think, when you think rationally, hey, should I eat this right now? You know, when you're rational, that's the top center of your brain. But when you're stressed out, when you're not feeling safe, your monkey mind, your lizard brain, your survival brain kicks into gear. And a hallmark sign of your survival brain being in charge is when you get tunnel vision, is when you lose control or when food just automatically is there in your mouth and you didn't even know how it got there. That's your survival brain being in charge. Not your thinking mind. Okay? So your survival brain can take over without you even knowing it. It can just take over if it doesn't feel safe. Now, here's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We see these needs. At the bottom, there's, there's like safety. That's the very bottom need, the emotional need to feel safe. So if you're not feeling safe, this is like you're not getting your fundamental needs met. Okay, so that if you're not feeling safe, you're not, your fundamental need isn't being met, your survival brain, your monkey mind, is going to take over and it's going to try to make you feel safe. Now, here's the key words. It's going to try to make you feel safe. Going to try to make you feel safe. Because the survival brain is going to do its best it can. But remember, the survival brain is tunnel vision. It can't think. So the survival brain, it's going to tell you to eat food. Because food temporarily, temporarily makes you feel safe. So that's important concept number one. We, the second concept is understanding how habits work. Survival brain and habits. Habits, they have three parts to them. Cue, routine, reward. Cue like your alarm rings in the morning, routine, like you brush your teeth, reward, you feel clean. You know, cue, routine, reward. You get that, you get those three ingredients and you got to have it. Boom. So let's think about that root, that cycle in terms of the survival brain. Survival brain gets stressed out. You know, someone sends a text message even and it upsets you. Survival brain gets stressed out. Q. That's the cue. Your survival brain getting stressed out, getting triggered. That's the cue. Now you could also get cued if you're sad, if you're bored, if you're exhausted. There's different cues, but the, all these different cues, exhaustion, boredom, stress, sadness, grief, they all trigger the, the survival mind to want to make you feel safe. The survival mind is trying to take care of you. It's trying to help you out. It knows that you're stressed out. And it's trying its best to make you calm down, trying to soothe your pain, trying to distract your mind. It's doing its best it can. And the routine is food. Food numbs you out, distracts you, soothes your anxiety. It, it's there for you. It's predictable. It's, it's there. You know, it's secure. It, it is trustworthy. It doesn't hurt you. So these are rewards that reinforce this cycle. Now this is, remember, the, 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 the survival brain, when the survival brain is taken over your brain, the thinking brain gets shut down. It's, it's shut down. So it only, your survival brain only cares about the immediate present moment. So the fact that you're horribly bloated afterwards, the fact that you're beating the shit out of yourself, the fact that you got this fucking mental dialogue going on afterwards, survival brain doesn't care about that. Because you're, because temporarily it feels safe.
that that cue that those cycles are in play. You got to understand these two concepts if you want to stop emotional eating. You can't just journal and not eat your feelings without understanding these two concepts. So yeah, journal, great. Call a friend, great. Don't get me wrong. You, you need these things to stop emotional eating. There's a blog post down below where there's another list of these and it goes more in depth and you can check that out for more information. But, you know, you go on a run, t t go, go listen to music, watch a funny YouTube video, uh, meditate, cook something. You've heard of these things, self-care. But if you just, if you only have self-care, if you only have journaling and walking and, and all these great things, if you only have those without the mindset shifts, without the understanding of your habits, without the knowledge that your brain can get hijacked when an emotional need is not met. If you aren't aware of these forces that are going on, they're, they're going on. Like they're going on whether you like it or not. If you aren't aware of those forces, you're screwed. You're screwed. You aren't going to stick with it. There's no way in hell you'll stick with the self-care routines that, that are needed to overcome emotional eating. But let's say you are aware of these two things. How, what, what then? What do you do then? Well, I'm glad you asked. Okay, so let's say you're feeling unsafe. Previously, you weren't even aware that this, this was important. So now you're aware, oh shit, I'm feeling unsafe. I'm getting tunnel vision. These are signs that my survival brain is taking over because it feels unsafe. So now you're coming from this whole different place. You're like, how do I take care? How do I feel safe? How do I meet that emotional need? And let's say it's journaling. It could be calling a friend. It could be going on a walk. It could be whatever, a thousand different self-care routines. But let's just say it's journaling. Can you do journaling? in such a way that you will feel a little bit more safe. Can you do journaling or walking or whatever in such a way that you feel a little bit more safe? That's the criteria. Because sometimes people, you know, they, they might do journaling, but they're putting a pressure on themselves to journal the right way. You know, you got to journal the right way. And... If you don't journal the right way, you're going to screw things up. And guess what? If you're journaling in that way, that stern way, you're not going to have your fundamental need of safety met. What, journaling or whatever, it needs to make you feel safe. It needs to make you feel safe. And there's no, there's no way around that. There's no, there's no tricking that. You don't journal the, the right way. You... You gotta dig deeper than that. You gotta kind of relax. You gotta just say, hey, I'm gonna journal again on my feelings, like, and, and just, and, and, you know, do it in that way. And then it needs to feel good. You know, this stuff has to make you feel good because that's how you're gonna get the other cycle going. Your survival brain, that the, the same cue is gonna trigger a different routine. Instead of going to food instinctively, automatically, you're gonna be aware. Your survival brain's kicking in and a need is not met. A need, an emotional need for safety is not met. So I'm going to do these self-care routines to meet my emotional need for safety. That's going to feel good. That's going to rewire a different habit. So these are the building blocks of how you work with um, emotional eating. And then there's one other concept I'll just throw out there. It's kind of be a random tangent. But um, when I work with clients, we, we oftentimes dive in to this emotional eating part, you know, the, the getting your basic need met. How do you feel safe? If you're not feeling safe, can you, can you find ways to feel safe? What's going to make you feel safe? How do you know you're being triggered by the survival mind? You know, how can you become aware that you're being triggered? Uh, this a huge, huge fundamental piece right there. But another part is nutrition. And I'll just cover this real quick because it's not the focus of this video. I just want to give a little bit of tidbit. Um, if you're keeping a journal of a like of your of your times you emotionally eat, you know you, you you'll notice you'll see a clear pattern that 
the times when you lose control around food, the times when you uh, forget about everything and just are eating randomly and mindlessly, you'll find that those times you're actually, you haven't eaten enough that day. If you're aware of how much food you're eating, you will see a clear pattern that you lose control on the days that you don't eat very much. So I'm just gonna plant that seed for a future video. Um, you don't eat very much. That's one of the background reasons that can cause you to get triggered, to cause your survival brain. You know, if you cause your brain to get into survival mode, this happens so much. People just forget to eat. They're not eating enough. They're not, they're not getting satisfied. You're not getting satisfied by the food. You're not getting that, you know, you're not eating a few eggs and some carbs and some fat and getting a nice hearty meal in. You know, you gotta get that hearty meal in a couple times a day. You gotta get some good food in you that's gonna make you realize you're not dying of hunger. Like if you're not eating enough, your survival brain is gonna be on edge. It's gonna be like, uh, uh, uh. and any little thing, is gonna set it off and it's gonna be like, I need to feel safe right now. I need to feel safe right now. Or it might not be that aggressive. It might just be like, it might just clear your mind and then all of a sudden you're eating. You know, cause clearing your mind, that also is a way to make you feel safe. Okay, so let's just wrap up this. Um, like the video, do subscribe, check out the article below for more information. All right, namaste, have a great day. And let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Happy to engage with you. All right, peace.